So we're going to talk about focus stacking. Now, like I said, it's an absolutely incredible technique for landscape photography. It's fairly simple and it really opens up compositions to you. So way more opportunities for compositions. The compositions you can create are more interesting. Uh, it's just a fantastic technique and it's become pretty widespread in landscape photography these days. I would say a lot of, uh, a lot of professional uh, landscape photographers are employing this technique when they're in the field. So we're going to talk about exactly what it is. And then we're going to talk about the two components. So there's an in the field component. So there's things you have to do with your camera in the field for this technique to work. And then there is a post processing component, which is mainly going to be our focus tonight. But those two things need to happen. Otherwise, this technique will not work. So let's talk a little bit of what, about focus stacking and what it is. So I know that experience levels, um, you know, all that stuff, familiarity with Photoshop, probably all over with, uh, with the group. But let me just say this, even if you're not using Photoshop, you can do it. And again, it's fairly simple. So, if some of you out there are familiar with exposure blending or HDR, high dynamic range, um, blending, things like that. So basically, you know, you might take a, uh, a darker exposure for your sky. So your highlights are properly exposed. And then maybe you take another exposure for your foreground, your mid ground, which is a little bit brighter. So your, your shadows are properly exposed. And then in Photoshop or even in Lightroom, some program, you blend those two exposures together. So that's exposure blending. It's basically exposure blending for dynamic range. Now focus stacking is very similar. We're actually going to blend exposures, but instead of blending for, um, you know, say a dark exposure and a bright exposure, something like that, we're going to be blending focus. So let's, I have a little template here. This is a, a shot taken from uh, I have a, an example, I should say. This is a shot taken in Glacier National Park. Uh, I took this on one of the workshops we do there. And I've just kind of laid out some things. And we're going to walk through, you know, what focus stacking is and what I'm trying to achieve in the field. So the benefit of focus stacking is it allows us to get our lenses. If you think about landscapes, you know, we're using wide angle lenses a lot. It allows us to get our wide angle lens extremely close to foreground elements. And because of just the natural distortion and the perspective that you get shooting, you know, wide angle or ultra wide angle, when you get that close to objects, you can create really cool effects. For instance, in this image, I'm maybe six inches from these flowers. So they look a lot larger, um, you know, if I would, then they would have, if I was standing, say, you know, six feet back or something like that. The flowers look much larger. Um, it's just a really nice foreground. Now the challenge is due to physics and just optically how a lens is engineered, even if I'm shooting at the narrowest, you know, my maximum aperture, say F 22, even if I'm doing that and I nail my hyperfocal distance, you know, I, I just, I nail perfect focus. Even if I do all those things, if my lens is a few inches from these flowers here, physically, I cannot get these flowers in focus, the mid ground in focus and the background in focus in one single exposure. So focus stacking is a solution for that with focus stacking. Instead of trying to get everything in focus in one shot, what we're doing is we can place our, our wide angle lens very close to an object or um, some type of element you know, again, just inches away. And what we're going to do is let's follow these boxes I have laid out here. These boxes are pretty, you know, pretty much analogous to focus points. I have one, two, three, and four. So what I did with this image is I had my camera settings. My camera settings are listed at the top here, 14 millimeters, F 16 for my aperture, ISO 200, one over 30, you know, one, one thirtieth of a second for my shutter speed. It's good thing to note here. These camera settings stay exactly the same from exposure to exposure. So keep that in mind. It's going to make more sense. So what I did in this image when I was in the field 
is I'm on a tripod, so my camera's on a tripod. I probably had a two second self timer going to, to minimize camera shake. I took four exposures, all that, th these cameras, this basically, you know, all 14 F16 ISO 200 one thirtieth of a second. All exposures were captured, captured at these settings. I took one shot, my first exposure with my focus point right here on the nearest flower. So one exposure with focus here. I took a second exposure where I refocused my camera. So again, I'm not changing camera settings, I'm just changing my focus point. I focused here. I took a third exposure where I focused in the mid-ground. And then a fourth exposure where I was focused at infinity or somewhere on the background. So what I had was four exposures, all at the same camera settings, but they all covered different focal planes, right? My first shot kind of covered this focal plane here that I'm highlighting with my mouse. The second kind of covered this foreground and midground transition. Third covered the midground, and then fourth covered the background. So again, I'm not changing my camera settings, I'm not moving my camera. All I'm doing is changing what's in focus from exposure to exposure. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm gonna stack all, I'm gonna stack these exposures using this cool technique in Photoshop, which we're about to get into. And again, the benefit of this is you can throw your wide angle right up next to, you know, a mud crack. We're gonna do mud crack example, a flower, anything on the ground. You can get super low, create this really cool perspective, but you can still get an image that's tack sharp front to back. So that's the main benefit of focus stacking. It's such a great technique. So what we're gonna do now is we kind of talk about what you need to do in the field. I'll re-emphasize those things, but we're gonna actually walk through an example in Photoshop. So I'm just gonna turn on visibility. So I have four images here in Photoshop. Now I know some of you might be using Lightroom, some of you might be using Adobe Camera Raw through Photoshop to load your images. Whatever method you choose is fine. All you have to do is just open all your, you, you, the exposures you took that you wanna focus stack as layers. Now we're actually gonna add another step onto this and I actually have, well, let's just walk through the top here. So I have, a, uh, I have a foreground layer and you can see, so with this foreground layer, it's at the very top, I focused right here on these mud cracks. So this area is in focus here. If I go look at the background, you can see the background, not in focus, right? So I did the same process here. I have one for my foreground, I focused right here. I didn't move my camera, I didn't change my, my camera settings. I refocused on the mid-ground, if we zoom in. So here's my foreground shot, you can see it's blurry right here. So I refocused for the mid-ground and I'm just gonna turn off visibility for the foreground. You can see that's in focus now. And then I took one more for the background where I basically focused at infinity or focused on this butte in Badlands National Park. And that's my background layer. And now after I did all of that, I actually took another exposure for the sky just because my highlights were a little blown out. So we're actually gonna do two things. We're gonna do the focus stack and then I'm actually gonna blend in the sky so I'm actually gonna do exposure blending for HDR to recover some of these highlights as well. So as I kind of been stressing, it is a simple process in Photoshop. There's really three key steps. We need to align our layers or align our images. We do the actual focus stacking, so we do the blend, and then we review for any errors. Now there's a couple steps in between, but I'm gonna walk through each of those. So let's do the focus stack. Let's walk through the steps. So the first thing I'm gonna do is actually just toggle off visibility for the sky layer. So I'm gonna turn that off for now. And the first thing we're gonna do is align these three layers that we wanna focus stack. The foreground layer, the mid-ground, and the background. And the reason we're doing that is because even though it's not as evident in this image, it'll be more evident in our next example, but even though my camera's on a tripod, it wasn't moving, and my focal length did not change, you'll notice that for my foreground image, when I focus the nearest, basically I'm focusing at the nearest uh, point possible to my lens. When I do that, 
let's just say I'm shooting at like a true 14 millimeters. When I focus out a little bit and eventually focus to the background, my lens might actually be around like 14.3, 14.4. It's an arbitrary number, but when I, when I focus on the background, it's a little more zoomed in than compared to the foreground. So to correct all that, I'm just going to make sure all these images we're gonna blend are aligned and they're seamless. So what I'm gonna do is hold down shift on my keyboard. I'm gonna have the first top layer selected. I'm gonna hold down shift and I'm gonna click background. That's gonna highlight these three layers, right? These are the layers I wanna focus stack. Next step is I'm gonna go up to edit and I'm gonna choose auto align layers. So I'm gonna left click here you're gonna get this dialog box. I'm gonna choose auto, and then I don't want any of these lens correction options checked. So very simple, edit, auto align, make sure I'm on auto, and I'm gonna click okay. Now Photoshop's going to basically find edges in the image, and it's gonna line those edges up. Um, it varies image to image, it depends on the light and everything like this. This should be fairly simple for Photoshop. You know, we have a pretty distinct edge on a horizon between the sky and the butte. But Photoshop does a really great job of aligning uh, images. So we'll just give it a few seconds. I should note too that usually uh, the more images you have in your focus stack, the longer this process takes, the whole alignment and the merging. Um, I... Personally, I usually do about three to, I would say three, four, or five, somewhere in that realm, with three being the most common. I usually take three exposures. I usually shoot at a fairly narrow aperture, like f16, something like that. Um, that's going to maximize depth of field, and we'll talk about why that's important uh, in, in this example and the next one. But doing that allows me to basically, I, I don't have to take a ton of exposures. I can just shoot, you know, maybe three or four, and uh, you, you really want to do this in the least amount of images possible because the more images you have, the longer it takes, the more complicated it takes, and, and really for me, the more time it takes, right? When we're processing, we want to get in and out. You know, we love taking images in the field. Um, processing is, is fun, but, you know, it, it is time consuming. Okay, so now as I toggle off visibility, <clears throat> we have perfect alignment here. So this next step is, is crucial because I, I kind of mentioned what we have to do is we have to align, we have to blend, and then we have to review. So what we're reviewing is we're gonna see if Photoshop makes any mistakes. And we're gonna need to have to correct those mistakes if Photoshop does. Now Photoshop does a pretty good job but it's not perfect. So what I'm actually gonna do is group these layers together. So the ones I'm gonna focus stack. I can do that by clicking this icon here, or I prefer the keyboard shortcut. So Control or Command G. And that's just gonna group these. It's just a way to organize the layers. So it's gonna group these together. And I'm actually gonna do another keyboard shortcut. I'm gonna do Control, uh, Control J if you're on a PC, Command J if you're on a Mac. And that's gonna create a copy. So I have two groups now. I have one, this original group, and then the one I just basically duplicated and created a copy. I'm gonna double click here and just name this backup. And I'm gonna minimize it right now and turn off visibility. And I'll name this layer active. So we're not gonna worry about our backup. We're gonna use that during the last step. So if Photoshop does make a mistake, we're gonna use this group to kind of correct that. So now that we've done that, we have our backup, we can actually do the focus stack. We can do the blend. Same thing, I'm gonna click on the first one. I'll hold shift down and click the last layer in the group and now they're all selected. And I'm gonna go up to edit and I'm gonna go to auto blend layers. Now we wanna choose stack images. You wanna check seamless tones and colors. And then I'm gonna click okay. And again, we're just gonna give uh, Photoshop a little bit of time. And this, again, if you're shooting a mud crack scene like this, fairly easy, nothing's really moving around. If you have flowers, blade, blades of grass, you know, things like that, sometimes it takes Photoshop a little bit longer. 
but we'll get an output in just a second here and we'll look and see what happened. So you can see uh, basically Photoshop applied a layer mask to these three images and let's actually zoom in. Let's, let's look and see what we've got here. So now with the blend, you can see here's our, here's our foreground, right? So this is in focus, our midgrounds in focus and look at the butte and the backgrounds in focus. So really easy. I mean, boom, everything's attack sharp front to back. Now, I like to zoom in and see if Photoshop makes any mistakes. And right away when I zoom in, I see that Photoshop did mess up. And I can kind of see this in the mask too. This right here is my foreground layer. So this was only, only the foreground was sharp here. And I see a little bit of white showing through in my layer mask back here. Now this is definitely, you know, this definitely should be pulling, uh, you know, data from my background image where my background was sharp. So what we have to do is correct for this. And that's why we made this backup group. We basically made a copy of our layer. So I'm gonna turn on the backup. I'm gonna turn all these layers off for now. So I need to see, you know, I need to think about what layer do I need to fix this? Well, I need my background layer, right? That's where I was focused at infinity. I was focused on the background. This is where the background sharp. So I'm gonna to toggle it on. You can see, okay, well, that looks great. That's what I need. Now. What I need to do though is apply a layer mask because right now, remember, if you're not familiar with Photoshop, there is a hierarchy to layers. So whatever's on top, especially, especially when it's a pixel layer, will basically block what's below it. So right now, only data from this background layer uh, is visible. So what I need to do is apply a layer mask. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna highlight the background. I'm gonna click this icon here. That's gonna create a white layer mask. Now, for those of you unfamiliar with masking, uh, a mask basically is a way to hide or show what's on a layer. And you, you hear this common, uh, common phrase, black conceals, white reveals. So a white layer mask is gonna reveal whatever's on this layer. A black layer mask will conceal. Now, I want to basically hide everything for now. So I'm gonna use the, I'm gonna, I'm gonna select the layer mask and I'm gonna use this keyboard shortcut. Control I if you're on a PC, Command I if you're on a Mac. Now that's gonna hide everything on the layer. So if I zoom back in, you can see this is my focus stack. Now what I'm gonna do is press B on my keyboard and that's gonna select the brush tool. And I'm actually gonna paint white onto this layer mask now to selectively control what areas of this layer I wanna show through. So again, this area is blurred, this is not correct. So I want the background layer to show through here because I want it to be sharp. So what I'm gonna do is go down here, I'm gonna click this icon. I want this primary color here to be white because I wanna paint white on my black mask. Remember, white reveals. So I'm gonna set my opacity at 100%, everything else is at default. And I'm just gonna, I'm just clicking, I'm just painting and you can see here, here's no mask, sorry. Here's that layer off, here's the layer on. You can see I'm easily correcting those areas that Photoshop messed up. Now, one thing I like to do with focus stacking is I know that everything from like this line right here and on, so the butte, the sky, I know that's all in focus in this background shot because I focused at infinity, I focused on the background. So a lot of times, you know, I won't take the time to see if Photoshop made a mistake and I'll just grab that infinity layer and I'll just make sure, uh, I'll, I'll basically just use a, a masking tech like, technique like this to paint in that background layer to make sure everything is tack sharp. Now, uh, the other option is you can, you can zoom into your image and just look around everywhere, see if Photoshop did mess something up and then depending on what area of the image it is, you can use this foreground selection, the midground, uh, I'm sorry, the foreground layer, the midground layer, whatever you need to kind of repair the image. So this looks good now. When I zoom in, I can toggle this on and off. You know, it was all blurred over here. Now it looks much better. So next step is we wanna merge everything we basically have done so far. So I'm gonna go up to layer. I'm gonna go to merge visible. And that's basically gonna merge every layer that was toggled on that had this eyeball. The foreground and midground here, these were toggled off. These were from that copy, that backup that I was using. So I'm actually gonna highlight both of these 
and I can either drag them down to the recycle bin here, press delete on the keyboard, I'm gonna get rid of those. So here's our focus stack, let's look again. It was pretty simple, we're gonna walk through another example, but we've got foreground sharp, midground sharp, background sharp, right? Now, again, to just add another layer, uh, <laughs> you know, no pun intended, but to add another layer, let's do some exposure blending here. So I've got the sky right here, right? So what I'm gonna do is uh, basically just blend in the sky. There was, when I toggle this off, some of the highlights here were a little bit blown out. So I just took another darker exposure for the sky and we can do the focus stack and then we can do our HDR blend, a very simple blend here. First thing I'll do though is align these. So I'm gonna select both. And again, using shift or control or command, you can select layers. I'm gonna to go to edit, auto align. I wanna make sure these are aligned. They, looked, uh, they look to be perfect, but I like to do edit auto align just in case. Okay, so now what I'm gonna do is add a layer mask to the sky. Now, I showed you one way to do it. You can click this icon here, that'll add a white layer mask, and then you can press Control I or Command I to invert it. I'll show you another way. The other way is to hold Alt or Option down when you click this layer mask icon, and that will automatically add a black layer mask. So you can see black layer mask, it's totally hiding uh, my dark sky, right? So I'm gonna make a basic selection and then paint in the sky. So I'm gonna use the quick selection tool and uh, I'm just gonna draw, I mean, this is a pretty clean edge here. I'm just gonna draw, uh, I'm gonna click and drag across the sky. You can see Photoshop's made a very nice selection here. So next thing I'm gonna do is press B and toggle my brush. I wanna paint white on this black mask because white is gonna reveal the contents of this layer that I want, which is the sky. Now you see the marching ants are, are designating my selection. So that can be a little bit annoying. So I actually like to do Control H or Command H, that will hide them and it just makes it a little bit easier. Uh, it's just not as distracting. So same thing, white brush, white selected here, past the 800, and I'll just paint in on that mask, that dark sky. Okay, so here we go. Here's before, here's after, right? Four, after. So now I've brought those highlights back and at this point I would go to layer, merge visible, and at, th at this point I can process my image, you know? So I'm not going to talk a lot about processing tonight, but you know, I could go on, add some contrast, cool the image down, do any of the layer adjustments that I usually do, I can do that now. So we did our focus stack and then we did our exposure blend. Now one thing I do want to point out, I'm gonna zoom way, way, way in, and we're just gonna look, uh, I've got some dust spots up here. I actually think we're gonna to zoom to the bottom. Now this is gonna be really evident in our next example too, but what you'll see here, you see at the very bottom, it might be difficult for you, but there is a line here where above is in focus and below is very blurred. So you will sometimes get this on all four edges of your image while you, when you focus stack. And the reason you get that is because remember what I said about not, you're shooting, I shot all these at 14 millimeters. But when I do change my focus point, where my lens is focused, the focal length changes ever so slightly, right? Maybe just by uh, basically decimal points. But that alone is enough to kind of have these images not perfectly aligned. So one thing I like to always do is I, I zoom in, I check my edges, and I'm just gonna use uh, the crop. Oops, I'm gonna actually deselect what I had. I'm just gonna use the crop tool and select original ratio. And I'm just gonna make a little bit of crop. Uh, oh, so, so something like this. Just so I know my edges are clean, I don't have that distinct you know, switch from basically sharpness to blur. Um, it's gonna be really, like I said, really apparent in the next example, but I'll click done here. And here we are, and like I said, you know, if I wanted to, I can make a curves adjustment here, uh, add some really nice contrast to the sky or something like that. Um, 
and then use some layer mask. You know, I, I can do that. I can basically add any uh, adjustment I want. And I have an image that's tack sharp front to back. So that's why focus stacking is awesome. So um, let's walk through one more example. So let's cover this example. So this is taken in Glacier National Park. This is also taken during one of our workshops. But uh, same thing here. I wanted to create an interesting foreground. These flowers are really, really small and right on the, you know, uh, hanging off a cliff's edge pretty much. And it was hard for me to get a good composition without these flowers. So to kind of create an even more compelling composition, I set up my tripod. I was just inches away from these flowers. And I actually shot this at F22. And some of you might ask, you know, why would you shoot F22? You're gonna get diffraction in the edges. You're gonna get loss of sharpness, loss of image quality. Yes, that is absolutely true. You know, in an ideal world, I would like to always shoot between F8 and F11. But I shot this at F22 because at F22 on my lens, that is where I can achieve basically the minimum focus distance. So what I mean by that is I can put an image as close as possible to my lens and still have it in focus at F22. So that's why I shot F22, but same process. I, I have one, two, three, four shots here. The first two are for foregrounds. So let me just get a box. So my first shot, I probably focused right here, maybe even right here. Foreground two, probably focused right here. And then midground, I'm sure I focused somewhere in here. And then background, I focused you know, somewhere on the edge here. Now, Again, what you need to make sure in field if you do this technique is it doesn't matter how many shots, whether it's three, four, five, six, you know, 10, however many, you need to make sure in the field that you have the entire focal plane of, an, of a scene recorded throughout however many exposures it takes. So what I mean by that is for this scene, you need to make sure that you have, for instance, this area in focus in one exposure. In another exposure, you need to make sure you have this area. In another exposure, you have to make sure you have this area. In another, you have to make sure you have this area. Now again, most of the time I can do this in three shots. I, re I really think that's a good point to shoot for. Three, um, you know, foreground, midground, background. The times you see, you know, four or five shots is usually when you're really, really close to a bunch of different flowers. You have a bunch of different elements that are close together. Um, so they're all still kind of in your foreground but a little bit spaced out. But again, I shot this at F22, all the same camera settings. I just changed my focus point, okay? So I have four exposures. And you can see with, with this, <clears throat> when I toggle these on and off, these were all shot at 14 millimeter, right? I was shooting on a, a Nikon D810, 14 millimeters on my 14 to 24. So when I look at the metadata and the EXIF, all of them are at 14, but you can see, look at this slight change, right? There's a slight change in focal length. That's why aligning is so important. So <clears throat> let's walk through the steps again. I'm gonna select <clears throat> all the layers here, so all four layers. I'm gonna go up to edit. I'm gonna choose auto align layers. Check auto for projection. I don't want either of these checked and I'll click okay. And we'll just give Photoshop some time. <clears throat> and again, Photoshop is using the edges. It's finding areas with a lot of contrast. Uh, honestly, really amazing algorithms. I mean, it, it is incredible what Photoshop is able to do, um, even with aligning, and more so with when you think about the focus stacking process. I mean, being able to go through a group of images and pick out, you know, what's sharp in each image, uh, it's just really, really amazing. So we're just gonna give Photoshop a, a little bit of time here. It should progress through these pretty quickly, get them aligned, <clears throat> and then we'll walk through the rest of the steps uh, with focus stacking. Okay, so here we go. So if I toggle visibility on some of these layers, you can see now pretty much perfect alignment, right? So Photoshop does a very good job. 
Okay, so remember the three big steps. We, we auto-align, we blend, and then we review. Now, one of the, the minor steps in between there is we want to create a backup copy in case Photoshop does make a mistake. So with all of them highlighted, you can either click here, use the keyboard shortcut, Control or Command G, and then I'm going to use another shortcut, Control J or Command J. And now I have two groups, right? All with the same images. So I'll label this my backup and I'm going to turn off visibility. And then I'll label this my active layer. Okay, so let's do the focus stack here, okay? So I'm going to select all four of these. I'm going to go up to edit. I'm going to go to auto blend layers. We're going to choose stack images. We want to check seamless tones and color. And we're going to click OK. And then again, you're going to get another progress bar. Photoshop's going to go through, find the areas in each of these four exposures that is sharp and in focus. And we're going to get an output. And we're going to hope that Photoshop has done a good job. And I will say, unless it's things are uh, blowing in the wind, I would say wind is usually the biggest issue. Unless there's a lot of wind, Photoshop is usually going to do a really, really good job of blending these images seamlessly. When you get flowers that are inches away from your lens and they're moving in the wind, it almost becomes impossible to do this technique. Okay, so we got all our layer masks here. Let's check it out. So we got sharpness here in our flowers, sharpness in the midground, sharpness in the background, right? But I already see Photoshop's made a little mistake here at infinity. I'm sorry, my, on my background image that's focused at infinity. And I find that Photoshop does this a lot. Usually foreground, you know, midground, those areas Photoshop handles very well. But I also I almost always notice that Photoshop blends in some of that initial, uh, basically the shot where your focus point's like right here. For whatever reason, sometimes it blends a little bit of that image into your background. Again, that's why we have our backup. So I'm gonna turn it on. I know I wanna use my background layer, so I'm gonna select this. I'm gonna add a layer mask and I'm gonna invert it, right? So I'm gonna add a layer mask. Here, let's... Okay, so I've got the layer mask here and I'll zoom in. Okay, now remember, I'm gonna use, I'm gonna use my brush tool. Press B for the brush tool. You can just click it right here. Got white as my primary color, opacity is 100. And I'm just going to paint white. Just going to change the size. I'm just going to paint white on that background. You can see I've already corrected that. And again, I like to kind of just paint all over my background because I know I focused at infinity. I know everything in that background is going to be sharp. So I'm doing this because instead of doing something like zooming way, way in here, and just checking at 200% magnification, something like that. I'm just gonna blend it all in because it's very easy to just grab a brush, uh, use a layer mask and fix that. So I'll zoom in again, let's look. Here's before, here's after. I fixed a lot of those problem areas, right? Even down here in the valley too, if I zoom in a little bit. Here's before, here's after. So it's just looking much better as a whole. Okay, next step, we're gonna to go to Layer, Merge Visible. And again, these are, three, these are three of the backup layers. I did not use these, so I'm just gonna select them and I can drag them to the recycle bin. And now I have this base layer that I can actually work from and process from. Now remember, we wanna check our edges and when I zoom in here, you can really see what I'm talking about. You see that harsh line? You know, there's like a, a decent amount of pixels there on all these corners. And there's this, you can see there's a line here, line up here. So we really wanna make sure we crop after we do focus stack. And if I zoom in here, you can see there's this transition where it goes from you know, sharp to blurred. So we really wanna crop after every time we focus stack and just kind of fix that. Uh, I'm just gonna eyeball it here, but you should zoom in when you're cropping, make sure that uh, you're basically clean on uh, all sides. Now I'm going to show you guys another really uh, a, a cool, I don't want to call it a trick, but a cool thing with the crop tool. And this is also true in Lightroom. 
So let's just say something like this. Now you see there's an overlay here, right? When I'm cropping, there's a little bit of an overlay. You can actually change this overlay and I find it really helps when you're either cropping or thinking about your composition with whatever image or scene you're working on. So if you go up to the toolbar here in Photoshop, you'll see this little grid box. If you click on this, you'll see rule of thirds, but all these other compositional rules. So there's a golden ratio, that's what I have selected now, golden spiral, uh, triangles, diagonals. So these, these are all based on compositional ideas that, that are proven to work. And uh, I won't get too much into that, but one thing I want to show you is I'm going to click on triangle here and I'll just show you and talk about a little bit what I was thinking when uh, I made this composition or I came across this composition in the field. So one thing I do a lot is, I, in my own work, is I try to connect key elements of a scene with basically diagonal lines. So the big thing here is I have flowers here, right? Big flowers down here. That's kind of an anchor in my left corner. And then you'll see there's this diagonal line that connects these flowers with this mountain here. And same thing as rule of thirds. You kind of want to place one of those key elements right where this intersection, right where this triangle happens, right? So I'm pretty close. Now, there's a little bit more going on though. You'll hear people talk about S curves, curves and things like that. This helps you kind of visualize a curve as well. So I won't say I have a great lead in in my bottom that starts to curve. I think I just have my flowers. But from there, you'll see the eye comes in. You have these nice flowers. It's a nice anchor in the left hand corner. The eye progresses up and we hit that mountain. But we have a really nice curve here, right? We have this open valley. There's actually a little bit of a river cutting through. And of course we have really nice light, right? So eye comes in, comes up to the mountain, curves around to the light. So you can see using this, tri you know, this triangle um, overlay kind of shows what I was thinking in this image and why it works. There's nice visual flow in this image. So I always think about some of these overlays when I'm in the field and when I'm, you know, uh, composing a shot. But you'll see I can click through, you know, I can bring up diagonals. This kind of helps with uh, like a V composition or leading lines. Um, the golden ratio, which is similar to rule of thirds, but based on uh, a different ratio. So, you know, the nine boxes we have are not uh, all of the same size. And then the golden spiral. Now, I can also toggle through these by pressing O on my keyboard. And something like this golden spiral, I can actually hold down shift and press O, and it will change uh, how it's oriented. So I'm just gonna, uh, you know, click OK. And we'll get to questions in just a few minutes here. I thought I'd talk about really some, some basic, uh, you know, basic approach to processing with this image. Um, basically just one adjustment. And you hear people talk a lot about depth. And I'll show you how you can very easily create depth when you're doing something like focus stacking. Uh, because if you think about how our eyes actually view a scene, let's think about this image. So what's going to have more contrast and more detail? Is it going to be the flower that's, you know, a foot in front of my eyes? Or is it going to be the mountain that, you know, could be 50 miles from me? Right? It's obviously going to be more detail and contrast here, less detail, less contrast in the background. So that's just natural for the eye. That's how our eye actually views the world. You know, that's how our eyes physically work. So one thing I try to do when editing and actually trying to create depth in an image, which is just going to create a more you know, dynamic image overall, is I try to think about that. So something very simple that you could do in this image is I'm just going to use brightness contrast, an adjustment layer, a very simple and basic one. Um, I'm just going to add some brightness. I'm add a little bit of contrast, something like this. I'm actually just going to use a, a basic layer mask. So I'm going to press B. I'm going to change B for brush, change my, my color to black here because I want to conceal basically up here. And then I'm just going to paint black on the background. Now this is, this is sloppy, but you will get the picture here. So I toggle this on and off. So boom, more contrast, more detail, more pop, right? And I could really overemphasize this if you want. I'm going to just leave it as is. 
Now, what I'm going to do in reverse is this is actually counterintuitive, but I'm actually going to create another brightness contrast adjustment layer. Now, I'll actually just decrease contrast a little bit and open up the brightness. Oops, I actually went the wrong way. Decrease contrast. So something like this, and I'm just going to add a black layer mask. I just press Control or Command I to invert that. Now I'm going to toggle, I'm going to press X on my keyboard. That's actually a really good shortcut to switch between the main color of your brush. So this is what's referred to as the primary uh, foreground color. So whatever color this is, whether it's black or white or some other color, that's what your brush will paint. So I want to paint white, and I'm just going to paint this in in the background. Okay, so I'm going to group these together and I'm just going to show you very simple easy way to create depth. Make things that are closer to your eye, more detail, more contrast, make things that are further away, have less contrast, a little bit brighter. I like to call it diffusion. There's some other techniques I use as well, but we're trying to create, kind of emphasize that diffusion you get, you know, when you're looking at something 50 miles away, there's a lot in the atmosphere, right? So here's before, and here's after. It just kind of opens up the image, and I think we could actually uh, darken this down just a little bit, the foreground one. So th this looks pretty good. You know, here's before, here's after. I've just kind of opened up the eye to the background, right? So we still have contrast here, and I would actually use some other tools to really bring out the pop in these flowers. But you can see, you know, here's before. Here's after I've totally changed the visual flow of the eyes. I've opened up the eye to the background while still adding some nice contrast here. So I wanted this to be about focus stacking, but just, just a basic you know processing uh, idea there. Um, main takeaway, focus stacking, you know, you got to do it right in the field, but if you get your shots, it's a very simple technique in Photoshop. And it's going to open up a world of new compositions for you. I mean, you can get your lens just a few inches from really anything, get really cool perspectives. And I really think if you start trying to use this technique, it'll transform your photography for the better. So I just want to thank you guys for joining. Thanks for watching. And please try out this technique. Let us know how it goes.